Imagine there's a dice with 50 different sides. Now they're all the same except for one, the magical side. And that has a special effect where when you roll it, you get $1. How many times would you roll that dice? You'd probably roll it a lot. That thing could just be sitting there printing money as you're rolling it. However, you could roll it once, get paid, you might have to roll it eight more times until you hit that magical square again, get paid again, and then you might have to roll it 140 times without hitting the magical side until you rolled it the 141st time and then got paid. So basically, using statistics, we can say that roughly every 50 times you roll it, you will win a dollar. But sometimes it might take you eight rolls, and sometimes it might take you 140 rolls. Now, imagine there is a mega magical dice, and it has 500 sides, but it also pays you $10 every time you hit the magical side. You would still have to roll it roughly 500 times to hit the $10 reward. Now, even though it has the same average payout, about two pennies each time you roll it, it'll take you a lot longer to get that payout. Now, this actually is not an issue if you're rolling it all night long, but for example, if you only roll it on your break at work, you could be rolling that dice the whole time and not get a single payout. Or you could get lucky and get a payout twice. Now, imagine that there is a mega mega dice and it has 5,000 sides, but it pays you $100 every time. Now scale that up. Take this example and extend it to a dice with half a million sides, but it pays you $10,000 whenever you hit the magical single side. So now it's basically a lottery. Would you rather roll this dice or the regular dice that only had 50 sides? So even though on average they pay you the same amount, which is two pennies a roll, you want the smaller one because you would get paid more often. Well, this is exactly what a mining pool is. So before we continue, you're going to want to go watch our What is Proof of Work video because it explains the concept so well that your grandpa could understand it. And you're going to need to understand it before we move on in this video. So proof of work is when a computer is incentivized to solve a complex puzzle by guessing and checking until they get the right numbers. In the case of Bitcoin, you're trying to find a random mix of numbers and letters that you can put into a magical black box so that it outputs a certain number of zeros. And if you get the right number of zeros, you win the lottery, and we say that you have solved that block, and that it will get added to the total blockchain. So solving it means that you get the reward, and for our example, we're going to use Ethereum. A block reward right now is around 3 Ethereum, or $9,000. You could solve that on your own. Here's the issue though. If you used a general personal computer to try mining Ethereum, it would take you around 3,494 days on average to solve the block on your own. Now this means you could solve it in three days or you could solve it in 12 years. But on average, this is how long it would take you. Now the problem is we want to mine Ethereum and we want to get rewarded for it now instead of playing the luck game. So we take a whole bunch of other people who also want to mine, we group them together and they work towards that block all at once. This takes the average time down from 3,494 days to two hours. And then whenever the group finds the solution and earns the reward, they split it up between everyone who has mined it, even if they particularly weren't the ones who found the successful solution. So those who work harder get a larger percentage. That way it's fair to them. Now the first question you might be asking is, what if we told them that we were mining harder than we actually were? Because it would be really easy to write a piece of code that told them that we were working way harder than we actually are. For example, in Instead of mining at 30 mega hashes a second, we could easily write a program that tells the pool we are mining at 30,000 mega hashes a second and then get the majority of the block reward. So this is how they solved that problem. Instead of the pools taking a miner's word for it, the pools came up with something clever. Let's say that to solve the current block, we need 20 zeros in the hash. So what the pool does is they take any solution that you find with at least 10 zeros and they give you a share. So you're mining away and you find one with 10 zeros, one with 12 zeros, one with 18 zeros, one with 13 zeros, and one with 17 before someone else finds the solution to the block. Now since these shares prove that you are actually mining, we submit those as proof that we were working towards the solution instead of just having the pool take our word for it. So essentially, instead of getting paid once per year, the purpose of mining pools is to get paid once per year per hour. Even if what we're getting paid is a smaller amount, it is much more reliable, and that's the benefit of a mining pool. You should also know that most pools have fees, something very small like maybe 1% to help support their development and pay for certain things like web hosting, but it is something you should be aware about. Alright, continuing this video, I'm going to be using an actual example of a mining rig that I have hooked up to a mining pool. So I actually have my two computers here and then a mining rig that I've built and it's submitting shares to Nanopool. 
So this first box right here, 323, this is the current calculated hash rate. So as you can see down here, these are all the shares that I have been submitting to this pool. Based on the number of shares that I have submitted, they calculate my current hash rate. So the shares is how I prove that I'm actually working because this number right here, this reported hash rate, I can make this number whatever I wanted to. So if we zoom in here real quick, you see this orange line right here that goes up and down, up and down. This is like rolling the dice. Well, this minute I rolled way more than I actually had. And then the next minute, as it's lower than the black line, I actually mined less than I should have. So it goes up and down, up and down. But on average, it creates this average hash rate for the last six hours. So that's this blue line. And this blue line should match the last reported hash rate, which is the black line. And as you can see, it basically does. It goes up and down, but on average, even this, these dips right here, they still roughly meet the black line. And if this is all confusing, basically what is happening is this current calculated hash rate is based on the number of shares, which is what the mining pool uses to try to figure out how fast I'm actually mining. Now this reported hash rate is how fast I say that I'm mining. What really matters is the calculated hash rate. That is what Nanopool pays you for. As you can see here, I have almost 0 0.05 Ethereum, which is actually the minimum payout. It says lowest that you can go. We're at around $163 here, and it says I'm going to be paid in around seven hours, which these are really nice tools on the mining pool dashboard. So in around seven hours, when I hit 0 0.05 Ethereum, I will be paid out to my Ethereum wallet address. Another thing that is really interesting is this is actually my mining rig. This is the dashboard for it. So basically I have seven GPUs hooked up to my mining rig. Each one is roughly mining at 30 mega hashes, which is around 30 million hashes a second. And this number right here, you can see how many accepted shares they have given. And then based on those accepted shares, it roughly calculates the pool hash rate. So I'm actually mining at Hold on, it jumped around here. I'm actually mining at 207 million mega hashes. That's my true hash rate. That's how fast the GPUs are actually working. But this pool hash rate is how much the pool calculates that I am mining at. And that's what they pay me for. You can actually see the current high share score list, which if you know what this means, it's very interesting. So like this one right here, the minimum share is 10 giga hash. If you can find any share that's calculated at over 10 giga hash, it'll send it to the pool and it'll be an accepted share. For example, this one was 64 giga hashes. And because of that, it didn't show up on my high score. And I have been mining for a few days now. So anyways, as we end this video, I really hope that you guys have learned something about how mining pools work. And I hope that I've answered some questions maybe on how the payout works and what the purpose is. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to watch more videos like this.